Hey, good afternoon. It's uh, Thursday, the 14th of May. Uh, coming to you from Macomb City Hall, this is Mayor Mike Inman with our COVID-19 uh, update. Uh, reporting information from the McDonough County uh, Health Department, uh, now a total of additional, excuse me, uh, an additional four confirmed cases in the county, uh, bringing our total to 58. Out of those 58, uh, they're reporting that 24 have recovered, and I think we talked to you about what that involves. Uh, symptoms are um, are diminished, no fever for 72 hours. So those folks, uh, 24, over two dozen people have met the required requirements for being classified as recovered. So that's good news. Um, would remind you that the health department continues to um, suggest, strongly suggest, and very strong words here that um, there's an anticipated continued uh, number of cases coming. Uh, and, and it is increasingly important to take precautions to minimize the spread of the disease. And again, they are strongly urging all uh, residents to comply with the governor's order regarding uh, cloth face covers, practicing physical distancing, and to continue to abide by the, all, all the provisions of the governor's um, order to maintain health and safety for the entire community. And they stress very much that cloth, they, excuse me, cloth face coverings when worn properly are an important source to control uh, the spread by, symptom, by people who otherwise have no symptoms. So uh, again, um, um, our, our um, thoughts and, and concerns go out to those folks that are now uh, uh, an additional four confirmed cases. Uh, but again, the, the, um, the positive side of that analysis is that our positivity rate, which is an increasingly important number we want to keep track of as we get closer towards the end of the month and anticipating some changes in the governor's stay-at-home order, that our positivity rate is 7.7 percent. So um, that uh, all in all is good. Again, uh, sharing some information with you here from City Hall. Um, during the last time we had an opportunity to share information with you, we talked again, reminded you that normally this would be the week that would be um, all putting all of our stuff, our accumulations, large uh, items at the curb for our citywide uh, take all cleanup. Uh, and again, I think maybe there have been some confusion on some of the information I shared with you last time. So in an attempt to clarify some of that, uh, we did suggest that although that's a, uh, that pickup is a contractual arrangement with us and waste management, that's part of the garbage collection fees that we pay all year round to support that effort and, uh, for example, also supports the curbside collection of yard waste during a couple of times during the year, as well as um, um, staffing folks at the yard waste uh, uh, dump uh, next to the uh, animal shelter out on Tower Road. Uh, this, much like those items, uh, the, the spring cleanup take all sort of situation is part of our contract with waste management. Um, but I do want to clarify that they have made it clear they're not canceling it, they're postponing it. We had a conversation with waste management officials today. They are going to uh, try to look at a timeline when we might be able to anticipate that. Again, uh, part of their um, uh, personnel management issues is that it requires two uh, waste management employees in the truck during this cleanup time and if you can I think you can understand that many of us put large items out things that are not normally obviously collected in our bins so um, they are trying to maintain safety for their employees uh, which means social distancing not exposing them to unusual situations and so they're looking at a timeline when those logistics might fall into place and they told us they would give us plenty of advance notice. But another component that has always existed in this contract is the ability for Macomb residents to um, uh, have waste management for a, an additional fee pick up large bulk items at the curbside. And rather than you taking a, um, an old piece of furniture or something like that, utilizing a pickup of yours or maybe getting a friend's pickup and taking it to the dump where there's a sizable fee that waste management imposes for that kind of activity. Uh, through the contract with uh, Waste Management, the city has negotiated a, a fee of $20 for those types of pickups, and Waste Management has done that for, or offered that service for a better part of a dozen years. Uh, some people are aware of it, some people take advantage of it annually. I didn't suggest that you do that in lieu of waiting for the 
curbside take all cleanup session, I would suggest that if you have items that are, it's an absolute necessity that you get rid of them, then this would be a way of you obtaining the ability to do that at a negotiated rate that the city has done. And those stickers, that, that, that payment doesn't go to the city, it goes to waste management. We only act as a conduit to allow for those stickers to be purchased and then placed on those items and an appointment is made with waste management to pick that up. So I hope that clarifies that this is not an attempt to get an additional fee out of anyone except for those people who want to avail themselves of a negotiated reduction in a service that waste management is willing to provide. So if you've got a place to store that stuff that you would be anxious to get rid of now and can do it and can wait till uh, maybe 30, 60 days when we get a, uh, an idea f logistically for a timeline from waste management, we'll, we'll be in a position to do that again then I, th I would suggest that's what you do. That way you incur no more expense. But again, the offer was to remind folks that for a better part of a dozen years, this service has always been available as an option that we negotiated with uh, Waste Manager for individuals in the city that wanted to avail themselves of that. So hopefully that clears that up. Uh, another uh, reminder that we wanna double down on today, we're very near what would be, what will be Macomb High School's graduation this uh, Saturday and, and uh, reaching out to folks at the Macomb School District. They have a uh, um, commencement exercise planned. It's uh, uh, utilizing uh, social, social distancing, but still uh, an opportunity to uh, celebrate those graduates. And that information should be uh, already in those parents' hands. It involves uh, cars and people getting out one at a time and some other activities that will give some semblance of uh, um, uh, commencement exercise to those Macomb High School graduates, some 140 or so of them. And we want to say congratulations to them. And part of that uh, congratulations is an effort that's uh, a collaboration between the Macomb Park District, the Macomb Area uh, Art Center, which is located on the east side of the square, and the Macomb Downtown Development uh, folks, Kristen Terry. Uh, when I say folks, she's a one-person operation. Um, but they have collaborated to obtain photographs from Macomb High School graduating seniors and got the cooperation of many, not all, but many of the businesses on the square to post those or display those pictures of our, our graduates uh, in their storefronts downtown starting tomorrow on Friday. Uh, an opportunity for the community to say, hey, we know it's not uh, an ideal situation, but we want to remind them as a community that we're still celebrating with them, proud of them, glad for them, and it's a, a shout out to the Park District and Nan uh, at the Art Center and then Kristen Terry in downtown development for that uh, nod, uh, tip of the hat, if you will, to our Macomb High School graduates. One of the things we'd like to share with you, many of you uh, have made outreach to my office and I, I've happened to see some comments on social media. We've been the benefactors of some uh, uh, Air National Guard activity in uh, the community over the skies of Macomb over the last several evenings this week, and it may continue to the week's end. Uh, I know that uh, some folks had reached out with a, a bit of concern about what the uh, um, activity might be. These are routine training missions for an Air Guard unit locally here. And I should maybe, uh, even though um, I, I understand people might be concerned, and especially at night when it was after dark, you couldn't really tell what was going on. But it, many of you may have had an opportunity like I did earlier this week when it was purely daylight out and you could see uh, these were tactical fighters of the United States Air Force and a bit of a reassurance from many perspectives including mine that uh, our military is out in the middle of all this still doing what they do so well and protecting us and maybe try not to get choked up a little bit sharing that with you. It should be a, a reassuring thing for us to know that we're still being protected uh, by our military across the board and you know Think about them as you hear those noises, uh, that those roar of those jet engines, and um, maybe we're enjoying the benefit of, um, indirectly of so many flyovers that the, the uh, Thunderbirds and the Blue uh, Angels have been doing in larger municipalities as a shout out to uh, first responders, those in the nursing profession. We're gonna say that that's what they're doing for here, us in Macomb too. I think that uh, without um, 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 the information we shared with you earlier, a reminder still has to be that 
um, social distancing, washing hands, face coverings, still very much a part of our equation today, tomorrow, and as we continue to move through this uh, pandemic and into what is uh, increasingly becoming the uh, spring and summer months where we all want to get out and enjoy things. Again, a reminder, if you're part of your household unit and you're out doing fun things, that's all acceptable. Uh, we would encourage you to maybe have your, your face coverings in your pocket. So if you were to come in to contact with some other folks in the recreation areas that you're involved in, I, I honestly believe that there's going to be some modification in the governor's um, stay at home order uh, within you know a matter of 10 to 14 days. We'll look forward to that. Um, I think we can uh, hold out some hope for that. I think it's very likely to occur and many of the things that we want some restrictions lifted on are going to occur. But again, we'll still be expected to practice those other things to keep this virus from spreading. So I, I'm anxious, I'm uh, just like you are to, to move uh, forward and, and but realizing that there is still no uh, cure for this virus, there is still no uh, ready um, um, treatment for this virus that's consistent and, and proven to be effective across the board. Working on it, very much working on it, but right now what we can control are our habits, our behaviors, and again for those of us that have, those of you that have been doing so well at that, thank you. I, I can assure you that our efforts are, are paying off from every perspective we're seeing here from these uh, reports from the health department and would encourage you to keep up the good work. We'll talk again soon.